mainly because they have chronic, they usually have chronic medical I- issues. Sure. Mm-hmm. Such as uh, maybe heart disease, diabetes, uh, chronic kidney disease, maybe cancer. Okay. And so what should these people take note of when they're outdoors? I think the first thing they need to note is uh, maybe pay attention to the 24-hour PSI level okay. so they know how uh, healthy... Uh, how healthy the air quality is. Mm. So when it reaches uh, more than 100, it's unhealthy. Okay. More than 200 is very unhealthy. So they, they may need to pay attention to the amount of time they spend outdoors. Mm. Ah, or like, uh, does it help if they go outdoors and they wear that, you know, the, the special... N95, yes. uh, yeah, the N95 mask does uh, filter out these fine particles. Yeah. However, if they are not outdoor for too long, okay, so we only recommend N95 mask wearing if they are going to be outdoors for hours. But most uh, of the time, it's just a simple commute, right? Um, yes, yes, yes. You know, walking from your HDB flat to the MRT station. Sure. So if it's just five minutes, there's no need for a, a, a N95 oh, mask. Oh, okay. But if you're going to be outdoor uh, for hours, uh, do... Uh, or if you intend to do strenuous physical activities, yeah. then perhaps that's not a good idea if you're in a vulnerable group. I oh, mm. see, I see. That makes sense. Yeah, Because we do have people who uh, spend some significant amounts of time outdoors, yes. like you know, our construction workers, our mm-hmm. waiters mm-hmm. in outdoor mm-hmm. cafes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these people should be wearing N95 masks? Uh, there are actually, uh, um, you know, MOM, Ministry of Manpower, there are actually rules in place to oh. protect these uh, outdoor workers. That's mm-hmm. great, so that's so meaning their employers are supposed to also pay attention to the PSI levels. Mm-hmm. So if uh, there is, if it hit, hits uh, unhealthy, or very very unhealthy levels, um, the the employers are supposed to uh, minimize the amount of strenuous physical activities to try and replace it with machinery. Okay. Uh, so that it's automated rather than human. Uh, sure. Getting the human to do the strenuous physical activity. That's one thing. Sure. The second thing is there's mandatory uh, breaks, mm-hmm. uh, or there's. Uh, that standardized amount of time they can spend outdoors. Mm. This, these are all, all measures in place to minimize uh, their exposure to the to, to inhalation of these fine particles. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Mm. Yeah, but let's just say that, you know, if uh, they should just take these precautions for themselves, right? You know, not just wait for what's mandated as well, right? Yes, so that's right. Look um, after themselves, you would say, mm, would, uh, mm. you know, wear a mask. Yeah. You know, and I'm pretty sure outdoor cafes, if there's haze going on, I'm not sitting outside. <laughs> so I will invite, I will invite my server to join me inside. Oh, yes, that's sweet. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's the bright side. We're joined this morning by Dr. Lim Hui Fang, who is a specialist in respiratory medicine. If if you have any questions, hey, drop us a WhatsApp, 88550913, or you can join us on Facebook as well at facebook.com slash 1FM91.3. More with Dr. Lim in just a bit. Good time. Yeah, good morning and welcome to Facebook. Welcome back, Dr. Lim. Thank you so much for yes. making time to join us. Uh, we definitely love chatting with you to find out how we can better protect ourselves. And uh, I also just found out... Just as a jest, she is a coffee lover like us. Yes. Yeah. And she came in with her <laughs> really nice, nice smelling cup, of, cup coffee. of coffee. I'm feeling awake right now. So really, I mean, this whole topic is so relevant to all of us, right? We talked about the outdoors, how to protect yourself if you're heading outside. Nice mm-hmm. point that you brought, brought out that, you know, if it's just a quick walk to the MRT station from your home, mm-hmm. you actually don't have to wear the N95 mask. But mm-hmm. please do so if you're going to be out there for a long time, right? Mm-hmm. What about indoors? You know, what can we... Do to uh, at home to protect ourselves better from the haze. You know, do we mm. should we be cleaning more often using the air purifiers? I don't know, humidifiers, mm. spray bottle. <laughs> I don't know. Who you spraying? I don't know. You spray all the particles, then they ah. will fall to the ground. I don't know. What do we do, doctor? <laughs> I think the first, the easiest thing to do is first uh, shut off uh, all the windows. Okay. Prevent the air particles from getting indoors. Okay. And then the second thing, what you can do is to filter out the uh, fine particles, especially if they are young children, yes, pregnant ladies, yes. or the elderly at uh, patients at home. Uh-huh. Um, so, what kind of uh, what kind of equipment can you use for to yeah. filter out? Uh, I think the easiest is to make sure your aircon is working well. <laughs> Maybe get it checked first, make okay. sure the filters are all working. Yeah, because sometimes we forget to check the filters mm. when you finally open it, right? It's covered yeah, in correct. dust. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, and no, it's actually, actually an easy fix as well. So no chance that, that extra dust is an extra filter, huh? No, no, no uh, chance. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's an idea. Dust filtering dust. <laughs> Am I on to something? Uh, I don't know. So check your aircon, especially with the haze period coming mm. up. You know, give your aircon guy a call. Mm-hmm. Anything else that we can do 
Uh, yes, uh, so you can also get an air purifier. Ah. But uh, I have been asked many times what is the best air purifier. My answer is I do not know. Uh, however, just make sure that when you get an air purifier, read the uh, spec, uh, read the specifics of yeah, the, the sp- of yeah the, the specs of it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Read, read the specs and then just make sure that it is able to cover the uh, area the whole, the whole the whole room that you want oh. the. Yeah. So some people buy the cheapest or mm. the cheaper one, yeah. but it can't cover the whole room, like the big living room. Uh, so yeah. you may need to get like the one floor or two square, years, correct? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. something I learned because there are the smaller ones. They're so cute. It's in the shape mm. of an egg. It's branded, you know. And then it, <laughs> yes, it can cover all sorts of like PM two point five and etc. Mm. And the smallest nano particles or whatever. But the floor area could be very small, like the size of maybe a bedroom, a small bedroom. Okay. Yeah. So you want to look out for the ones that can cover the entire floor size of say right. your living room, your lounge, yeah. yeah, your dining area. Yeah. So sometimes people have multiple uh, ah, air yes, purifiers yes. for each room ah. depending on the size. So you kind of like you hold your breath. From one air filter to the next one, you know, you, <laughs> and then you go to the next one. Don't breathe. Yeah, to da, get da, that da, fresh da. breath of air. <laughs> ah, strategy. Um, Dr. Lim, we also wanted to find out about um, COVID 19 patients yes. and how mm-hmm. they deal with the haze because now there's long COVID, right? Is that mm-hmm. something that you're hearing a lot in your line of work? Do you see a lot of people with long mm-hmm. COVID? Okay, so long COVID actually uh, is estimated to affect 10% of all uh, patients who had had COVID infection Mm. before. And it's not necessarily those who had severe COVID infections ending up in the the hospital settings. So it's actually, uh, most of them are in the mild cases. Uh, and so we do see a lot of uh, young, previously healthy uh, patients with uh, long COVID. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are the risk factors for long COVID? Uh, typically, patients with a uh, lot of symptoms when they had the COVID infection, maybe more than four or five symptoms, blood nose, cough, chest tightness, wheezing, gastritis. So the most symptoms you had when you had COVID infection and the chances of you getting long COVID is actually higher. Mm. Yeah. Uh, more obese patients also may have be at a higher risk okay. uh, of uh, getting long COVID. So patients with long COVID, unfortunately, sometimes the symptoms, uh, um, the effects linger for up to six to twelve months. Mm, then sure. they, and if if they have long COVID in the sense um, that, uh, so they will feel more lethargic. Their immunity may be a little bit low. Uh. But long COVID is quite a not general term. Rather non specific yeah. term. Uh, but we do have a lot of patients with post COVID bronchitis. Okay, hold that mm. thought. We're just gonna come back on air and perhaps you could explain to our on air listeners again this concept of long COVID, what that entails and who mm-hmm. are most susceptible to mm-hmm. it. Uh, yeah. my father in law actually has long COVID and so can't take long flights oh, now. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Also we got a great question from Willie. We'll find out more about that in just a bit. It's not a rumour, it's true. Dr. Lim is back in the house. See? (laughs) She's right here. And the coffee smells amazing. Oh, good. You can smell. That means you don't have a respiratory issue at the moment. Is that how we... That's the first test. Is that it? (laughs) She is our respiratory specialist. And you can find her at Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital and Glen Eagles Hospital as well. Welcome back, Dr. Lim. Uh, Earlier on, we're talking about the haze and how we can actually take steps to mitigate the effects of the haze indoors and outdoors but also because of covid right we wanted to know dr lim how does long covid uh, uh how are patients affected by the haze and what are some of the symptoms of long covid yeah okay, sure so we do see a lot of patients who develop uh post covid bronchitis wow. uh, or sometimes what happens is that they may have asthma as a child but after getting covid due to the lingering effects of the post covid in- inflammatory response mm-hmm. then they develop persistent uh, respiratory symptoms So most of the time They will present with uh, Cough A persistent cough That doesn't go away Usually um, Associated with chest tightness Oh wow uh, Hacking Worse at night mm. So if that happens That usually means They have a lot of airway low, Maybe lower airway uh, Inflammation and That's when they get Referred to the respiratory specialist And we do have to Start them on inhalers So my recommendation For perhaps uh, Patients who just recover from COVID Is that During the During a haze During the haze period They mm-hmm. should take Extra effort to make Maybe see a doctor control the underlying airway inflammation better Mm -hmm. so that they don't flare up and they don't get this persistent cough. So what do we mean? Inhalers, perhaps? Maybe a little bit of uh, uh, maybe some decongestion. 
suppress yeah. all the inflammation. Number two, stay hydrated. Number oh. three, if they are smokers, stop smoking. Mm. Uh, number four is like they may be they may have to uh, reduce their exposure to outdoor uh, strenuous physical activities mm. during the haze period. Yeah, maybe do their physical activities indoors for how long? Perhaps uh, up to three to four months mm. post COVID. Uh, so that they can recover faster. Okay. Because it does take a long time, right? Yeah, For the lungs, it, yes. you know, this internal yes. organ to recover. Yeah. That's a really good point because a lot of us, you know, we think like, oh, once we're recovered, we're good to go, you know, exertion mm-hmm. and everything. And mm-hmm. with the haze coming up, mm-hmm. it's so easy to just uh, throw caution to the wind mm-hmm. or the haze even. Yeah. Yes. What uh, per- sorry, what percentage of Singaporeans are actually suffering from long COVID? We, okay, I don't think there are any specific studies done in Singapore per se. However, uh, uh, internationally, the the estimate the estimated prevalence of long COVID is ten uh, percent. Mm. Wow! And it's not necessarily in the severe COVID patients. Okay. It's uh, more in the it, we we actually see um, more in the mild uh, COVID uh, cases. Okay. So someone could have had very mild COVID symptoms and then mm, be correct, suffering correct. from COVID. Yes, How does that work? Ah. Yeah, that's right. So it, essentially, what we are looking at is the what what the virus does is that it it, it turns on a switch right in some patients oh, no. maybe these ten percent of the patients they develop a auto inflammatory response okay so what they are suffering from is not so much the virus anymore but it's their own response their own immune response mm. ah it could be like just a maybe an over yeah, uh, right. reaction of yes, the immune system this yes. is so interesting yes. Yes. and you, you never think about it everything poor COVID-19 getting blamed for everything <laughs> no. <laughs> no it's an <it's> interesting <laughs> virus joking. my father-in-law is one of those people with oh, long COVID I mean he's okay. a super healthy dude mm, I, know, I mean okay. he goes walking every mm. day but now he's like hacking his coughing all of a sudden mm. there'll be lots mm. of phlegm coming out mm. out of nowhere mm. but as Dr. Lim says it mm. can be reversed it just takes some time mm. and you got to get the yeah. proper medication Correct. and procedures in yeah. place your father-in-law will be healed he needs to come see her I think so too <laughs> I got a great question from uh, one of our brightsiders Willie says good morning Dr. Lim does conditioning training you know instead of having a super clean environment um, improve asthmatic issues or sinus infection that's an interesting question Okay, so I think may, perhaps what you're referring to is desensitization therapy. I think so. Um, okay, well, it wouldn't work for uh, chemicals and pollution, but okay. what you can train your body to be desensitized to is aeroallergens. Like Maybe, dust. Yeah, house dust mites, oh. co- uh, cockroach, things that are uh, pollen. But oh, it okay. requires uh, controlled amounts in the form of uh, medication. So we oh. do offer house dustmite immunotherapy in the form of what? maybe sprays and tablets. We have these house dustmite extracts <laughs> that you put Whoa. under the tongue. Oh but you gosh. need to commit to it. It's okay. not for everybody. So it's for people who can who first are suffering significantly from okay. allergic symptoms. Uh, it's affecting their lifestyle. It's affecting their quality of life. It's making mm. them flare up repeatedly. Okay, so oh. patients with severe enough symptoms okay. or persistent enough symptoms. And number two, it's um, they must be able to commit because if you need three years to train your immune system to become oh, desensitized. Wow. Three years? Yeah, three years. Well, if you think about, you know, our lifespans are so much longer right now. Three years is over in a blink of an eye. But also Dr. Lim is very nice, so I don't mind joining three years. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so sweet. So three years yeah, and three. then you start them on this and you slowly increase, increase, increase. Increase, increase, um, or and then decrease, decrease, decrease. Oh the, no, we, we uh, put exposure. them on a steady dose. So ah. what it does is that it tells your immune system, hey, this aeroallergen is not an invader. Oh, ah, you oh, oh, oh. learn to recognize it uh, as a f- like as like a like an innocent bystander. So I it's see. no longer an enemy. I so see. your body's immune system is not going to overreact against this uh, allergen. Will you at the start of this program mm. experience some of the symptoms? Uh, yes, definitely. Ah. So that's why uh, we we first we have to. Confirm that the patient is really allergic okay. to the and and having allergic symptoms. Ah. Okay, it's not enough to just do a skin prick test, oh. but we must take a proper uh, history from the patient to make sure that truly when they are exposed to this aeroallergen, they have allergic symptoms. I see. Yeah, That's then, so fascinating. Mm, then yeah. after that, we have to explain to them uh, what kind of allergic side effects they may experience. We have to pre-medicate or uh, make sure that they are controlled properly before we start down the immunotherapy. So it's not for everybody, but for patients who want to you know, get on top or maybe overcome some of the allergic sure, symptoms, sure. then we, we can offer that. And what's the success rate of it? 
So most of the time, I would say that uh, after three years, the symptoms will mostly go away, more than 80, 80, 85%. However, oh, wow. uh, some of the patients may need a longer course. Of mm. course. Of course, you everyone's know what? different. I'm yeah. listening to this and all I can hear is, this is a good reason to be allergic to housework. <laughs> 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 no, then you'll be put on a three-year... <laughs> Uh, housework desensitizing. Then, you no do housework as, for me. No, no, but then you'll be made to do like a lot of housework until you find that actually housework is not a chore. <laughs> Think again, lady. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, if, uh, not, if not for Dr. Lim, I would have that very good excuse, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. One more great question from Eileen. She says, Is the reusable mask good against the haze? Maybe we can take that question on Facebook uh, mm -hmm. live and yeah. we'll revisit it if we need to back here on air. Join us. Thank you so much, Dr. Lim. Okay, reusable masks, yay or nay? Yeah. Oh, those are cloth masks, right? I guess uh, so. They, they don't perform very well in terms of uh, protection against fine particles, mm, okay. but against maybe droplets, virus, uh, viruses, oh. it's, it's actually, uh, 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 I would say, maybe 70% effective. So it's got it's to clean. Yeah. Right. It's Something is better than either. nothing, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. But, but the best would be the N95 mask. Yeah, right. Um, not, not, not against fine particles. Fine particles, you need the N95 uh, mask. Okay. But it's not, you don't really need to use the N95 mask if it's just a brief exposure uh, outdoor and you're not doing physical, strenuous physical activity. Should you be wearing the N95 mask and jogging? Does that kind of restrict your I breathing a lot more? I think it will be difficult too yeah. because it's mm. very uncomfortable. You sweat inside and it will oh. affect the integrity of the N95 mask. Yeah, because I remember during COVID, I was mm. wearing like the normal mask, mm. right? The yeah. blue ones. Mm. And I could hardly breathe when yeah, I was jogging. Difficult. I was just, because like, you breathe in and you're taking deep breaths. It's like, <laughs> you're kind of like sucking in your mask. Mm. Uh, so it just, it, it made it a lot more arduous to just be exercising. Mm. So I can't imagine the N95 is like, whoa, it's stuffy in here. <laughs> stuffy in. I think two words for you, Carol. <laughs> mm. Indoor machine. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, and then there's that as well, right? <laughs> Do you get personally affected by the haze, Dr. Lim? For, for myself? Yeah. yeah. Well, person, I don't do strenuous physical activities uh, How do you stay outdoors. fit? How yeah. is this possible? Cause what cause is your so slim? <laughs> Genetics and road ah, oats. And <laughs> road road <laughs> oats and coffee nuts. <laughs> Since young. My mom. My mom. <laughs> oh, it's, it's working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, those genes. Shape. Those family genes. Uh -huh. So you're not, so you're fortunately not very affected by the haze. You can go out and buy. I had childhood stuff. asthma. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had rather a uh, bad you, uh, childhood wow, asthma. How did you so I think as a child, it? I would have been quite uh, seriously affected. But uh, I, I would say that I was quite lucky because 50% of children can grow out Got of yeah, asthma. That's right. So I, I grew out of my asthma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did your mom uh, pile you with like, you know, uh, Crocodile oh, meat, no, 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 no. things like that. So the that. interesting thing is, I had a chat with a, a, a Chinese physician who was my friend. Okay. Uh, okay. And then he tells me it's not so much the crocodile meat, but the herbs. That oh, they go with the crocodile meat. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, it's the herbs that reduces the, inf the heatiness uh, associated wow. with asthma. Oh, it's not so much the interesting. Yeah. Wow, so it could be herbs with something else like chicken, Perhaps. or ostrich. Or I, I don't know why they chose. Crocodile. Oh, but uh, safe to say, uh, crocodile meat really tastes like chicken. Oh yes. wow! Yes, okay. <laughs> my dog eats it, oh, so I'll have go. to try some of his later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he eats all these exotic okay, things: wow. kangaroo, <laughs> crocodile, rabbit. Okay. It's good for him. Yeah. yeah, wrong country. Should live in Australia. <laughs> yeah, right. Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> My goodness, so many great questions. I know when it comes to asthma, I mean, uh, you know, when Shazad was here, the previous time when you were oh, here, because yes, yes. he suffered mm. from asthma mm. and still does, but he says it's it's pretty much yes. under control. I mean, what are some uh, myths or misconceptions you might want to clear up about asthma when it comes to those who are suffering from it? Or, yeah. or mm. trying to treat it? Yeah, so I think a lot of patients are very worried that they become dependent on the inhalers. So yes. I think the concept is, is I would say, a bit wrong in the sense because you don't become dependent on an uh, asthma yeah. inhaler. Okay. Um, you, or ra rather, you are trying to control your chronic asthma better okay. or treat it when it happens appropriately so that you don't end up taking too much oral steroids. Okay. Yeah, I have a few patients, they have mild asthma. Okay. Uh, ends up that whenever they fall sick, they get a quick fix. You know, oral steroids and ah. they, they are well very fast within okay. two or three days but what you don't realize is that the effects of oral steroids will accumulate 
So if every mm. year you're taking steroids two or three times a year, yeah. and then five, ten years later, your risk of getting diabetes, osteoporosis, heart disease, etc. goes up. Because Maybe, of yeah, that kind two, of two, consumption. Two to five times, yes, oh, exactly. Oh, wow, mm. yeah. I didn't know that. It is mild. Yeah. It's mild asthma. It only affects them maybe three times a year. But each time they get an uh, asthma attack, after a viral infection, they, they consume the oral steroids. And then that's when uh, they it's increase their risk of steroid-related complications. Why is that happening? Is that due to the lack of information or education at the point that they're you know, mm. being treated? I, I, I think the un- under-awareness. Or firstly, I think patients need to understand that actually yeah. asthma, mild asthma, is still a chronic issue. Okay, yeah. it may not happen every day, but mm-hmm. it will happen when they. It may happen when they fall sick. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So they need to know and find out from your doctors how to have the action plan, a preventive strategy, okay. so that when they fall sick, they have a standby preventer mm-hmm. or a controller that they can use. Mm-hmm. In the f- it's an inhaler usually. It does contain some low dose inhaled corticosteroid, okay. but it is fifty times less less toxic than an oral steroid. Ah. Why is it toxic? No, no, steroids itself is not, it's not, is, is, yeah. is not healthy for the yeah, body yeah. because steroids can cause a lot of metabolic side effects and yeah. affecting the eyes, affecting the sugar level, cholesterol level, etc. And it, it accumulates over time, you see. Yeah. Yeah. So each each steroid each steroid burst it's mm. if it can be prevented, yeah. we should always try to prevent the use of oral steroids. Wow. But it's different from inhaled steroid. Mm-hmm. Inhaled steroid is much less. It goes straight into the lungs. It will target the airways, open it up, reduce the inflammation. So, so I, 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 it's just so, how should I put it? It's just so unnecessary to be taking so much oral steroids when you can prevent it mm. with just a simple uh, no, one puff. inhaler. Yeah. In mm. an inhaler, it's not the blue inhaler. But the blue inhaler will ma- may make things worse paradoxically. If you just use the oh. blue inhaler, which is a reliever, without... The controller. What they need is a controller. Mm. Ah, yeah. And they are controller really reliever combination inhalers nowadays. So they, I wonder they, if they the users need, even know. They don't know. <laughs> they need to yes. see their doctor and stop treating asthma as a, as a flu. It's not. It's a lung attack. Yeah. But that Each. was the interesting thing. Mm. You know, when you came into the studio, Shazad, who had been suffering from asthma, mild, mm, mild. Uh, he was shocked. He didn't realize there was a difference. Mm. And I mean, for me, I think it's marketing, what we see in the movies as well. We mm. always see that yeah, blue, blue inhaler. One. So yeah. we think that, yep, that's what he's got it. He's good. But you're saying that, no, no, that's the one, the reliever mm. that mm. you shouldn't really be using. It's the controller, right? Yeah, it's a controller reliever. I'm not saying Control- they cannot use the reliever, ah. but they need to use the controller whenever they use the reliever. Because otherwise, they are just, it's like there's a fire going on, right? Mm. But they're just blowing a, a, a small little <laughs> handheld fan. <laughs> <laughs> they feel, oh, okay, it's not so hot, but... but but it doesn't it doesn't get, get rid the of root the fire. Of it. Ah. Yes. What they need is a fire extinguisher. And ah. that's the controller that they need. Wow. Brilliant we analogy. Gotta, we gotta go on air and talk about this again. We do have to. because uh, yeah, I do think there are a lot of misconceptions yes. here in Singapore. I mean yes. like the severity of the asthma as well. Mm. Some people think all cases are the same, equally bad, that's true. equal that's true. treatment. So mm. thank you so much for debunking that. Mm. Oh wow. So also the idea of steroids. I mean yeah. it's a it's a big topic mm. of interest right. and across the board because of how how steroids work yeah. and you really need to be strict in terms of mm. how you use it right mm. follow your doctor's orders and don't self-medicate <laughs> unless you're a doctor no you can't uh, well actually interestingly oh. I teach <laughs> my patients to self-medicate <laughs> oh. I teach them but they need to st- know how to self-medicate right. ah. it's called an action plan I tell them it's an action plan yeah but you see it's with the doctor's yeah, with advice the doctor. yes. and orders yes. don't do it on your own yes. don't come up with your own action plan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Very so well. interesting indeed. Mm. Yeah. So, how do you prep for haze period for yourself? For myself? Yeah. You know, do you like okay mm. check the aircon? Oh yes, yes, yes. So definitely. Uh, rather, it's my husband. My oh. husband will be uh, <laughs> Good making lad. sure the aircons are all working well. Ah. Uh, I have one lonely air purifier. What? Lo- uh, <laughs> How the, big is it? Uh, it what uh, floor area does it cover? Uh, it can cover my child's uh, bedroom. That's it. Okay. okay also, okay. the child is the one, the priority in the family, right? So <laughs> the child so. gets. <laughs> yeah, but I probably move it into my mother-in-law's room because now oh. she's the, the the most uh, vulnerable. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. Oh. Ah, she's following her own good advice. Mm. Uh, I think I gotta go and pick up some today.
Gotta air purifier, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got yeah. sale now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Definitely. Uh, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for chiming in and uh, with your questions. And I'll continue to do so. It might just win you this $100 uh, voucher from Far East Flora. Just want to share with you. It is uh, the new, brand new Far East Flora Center that is over at 435 Clementy Road. Nine stories of goodness. They have a garden cafe. They've got a fruit and vegetable market, a walk-in cold room you can definitely get plenty of fresh flowers so do send us your questions or your comments right now okay we're about to jump back live on air so do join us there uh we're gonna recap again you know some of those myths about uh, uh asthma, asthma and also the treatment of asthma yes hang tight You are listening to Wham! with the Edge of Heaven here on the Bright Side. Good morning to you. And we are joined in the studio with Dr. Lim here to talk with us about, you know, lung issues. And we had a very interesting conversation on our Facebook Live because this is something that happened the previous time you were in our studio. Uh, Shazad actually has mild asthma. And then he was shocked to discover, uh, you know, about how he was managing it. He wasn't managing it in the best possible way. So you talked about this common misconceptions with asthma, the treatment and the need for a proper action plan endorsed by the doctor mm -hmm. what do you have to say to all that okay great so uh, now that we're back on live i think uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, to summarize um, i think uh, um, most common uh, misconception is that patients do not recognize that uh, asthma even when they smile is still a chronic respiratory issue right. okay they may not need medications every day however they need to have the right inhaler a preventive a controller reliever uh, when they are sick so they should actually uh, speak to their doctors to figure out what to do okay, to prevent an asthma attack, which right. essentially is a lung attack. Okay. Mm. Okay, because mild asthma patients, if they get a bad virus or a bad exposure to something that they are allergic to, right. a mild asthma patient can have a very severe attack. They mm. can end up in the hospital, they oh. can end up in the ICU even. Wow. So I, I would say 50% of the patients who end up in the ICU for a life-threatening asthma attack are actually mild asthmatics mm. not okay. properly um, controlled okay yeah. so uh, a lot of patients the second misconception is that they think that when they are using their inhalers they become dependent on it the concept is wrong, wrong. rather because it's a chronic issue so they are actually using their inhalers to control it to get on top of it so that they become free from asthma free from Ooh. asthma symptoms so what should they be doing? So I think a lot of patients, they use the blue inhaler. The blue inhaler is a reliever, it's not a controller. So that's a third misconception. They think that they are well when they are using the blue inhaler. But the blue inhaler is the one where they, it, 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 like I was just explaining just yeah. now, okay? Uh, asthma is like where there's a fire burning inside your airways. There's a lot of inflammation. But the blue inhaler is a simple reliever. It's just like a handheld fan. <laughs> it makes you feel temporarily good, but it, it less hot. Mm. But it's not going to treat the underlying problem. Right. What they need is a controller. The okay. controller it comes in different colors, purple, orange, <laughs> yellow, but it's not blue. <laughs> Just not blue. Ah, interesting. Okay? Yeah, but th that's the one that they need to use to control the inflammation. Okay. And then the, s the blue inhaler will play a supporting role. When they are completely well controlled, they don't need the blue inhaler ah, at all. Because ah. that's the one you called Shazad out on. Mm. He had that blue inhaler ah, in his it. pocket, right? Yes. And then, yes, there was a whole little mini lecture going on in the studio. <laughs> And Shazad yeah. actually had kind mm. of uh, had it as like a an epiphany yeah. like he, when he realized. Yeah, right? yeah. He, and mm. he also was so used to carrying it around yes. because he saw that as the solution yeah, all the time. Right. He says, yeah. it's a habit to have it in my pocket yeah. now. Because they feel reassured or, yeah. or rather they can't live without the blue inhaler because they're not well controlled. Mm. Ah. And they, they feel that it, every time they get a bit of a trigger, be it a virus or a dust exposure or chemical or pollution exposure, they feel that, oh, then they quickly take the blue inhaler and they get a quick relief. Sure. However, that suggests that they're not so well controlled. Ah. Mm. That is really, this is enlightening because I think mm. a lot of people I, I too thought that mm. the blue inhaler was all mm. anyone needs. Yeah. Wow. Like the be all and end all of everything for yeah. asthma. Yeah. My patients are using more than two times uh, a week. I'll tell them two times is too much. Wow. Mm. Uh, because you're not getting to the yeah, root of the problem. Right. They should be asthma symptom free. 
Okay, so part of this is because at the beginning when they were diagnosed, you know, was not properly managed. Yeah. You know, maybe the information was not available mm. to them at the time. Mm. Uh, so thank you so much for shedding some light on that. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Lim, last question. When should someone come to see you for a respiratory condition? At what point? <laughs> Okay, so I think uh, we have a very good population of GPs uh, mm. out there. So they are the ones that you should go and talk to whenever you have a respiratory uh, issue. However, if you have persistent uh, respiratory symptoms that do not get well uh, after seeing the, the, uh, uh, your regular doctor, so persistent symptoms maybe after more than three to four weeks, uh, then perhaps may have to find out whether there's something else more subacute going on. Because whenever we see a patient, we need to identify what the problem is. Okay, is it still the same problem or is it a a, a different problem? Mm. Yes. Okay. So most of the time it's cough, right? Cough, yeah. cough, 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 cough. Yeah. Uh, ah. Persistent cough. Um, uh, one thing I'm noticing that I have, okay, I personally mm. have this issue. It's a runny nose. It's like ah, a persistent yeah, yeah. runny nose. Out of nowhere, you're fine most of the time and suddenly you, you're mm, talking mm, to mm, someone your nose starts dripping. I've noticed some people have that same symptom. Mm, what is going mm. on there? I think many many people actually have chronic allergic asthma, right. but it can be mild, moderate or severe. Mild patients, they may not have symptoms all the time because it depends on what they are allergic to and when they are exposed to the thing that they are allergic to. Mm. Right. So most of the time, they may be having just some mild, uh, mild uh, like what I have now, mild stuffiness. Doesn't yeah, bother okay. me. Yeah. Okay, but if I'm doing spring cleaning, I'm allergic to house dust mite. And right. then boom, my nose oh. will start dripping. That's a kind of asthma reaction. Uh, no, it's not. It's an allergic reaction. Oh, allergic reaction. Yeah. Ah. Okay. It's an allergic response, but upper airway. Okay. But okay. if it's not well treated and it constantly flows to the back of the throat, that's when they may develop a chronic cough. So when oh. we see a patient with chronic cough, we have to figure out, is it... Where, where's the problem coming from? Then mm. we fix the problem and then the cough should improve. Ah, I see. Oh. So I should come to you. <laughs> this has been going on for years. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you better be go and see her, okay? Right now, okay. Yes. No, we're going to make an appointment for you off air. <laughs> yeah? And see her. Dr. Lim, thank mm. you so much for joining mm. us today. Uh, I'm not sure if I should check with the doctor on this. I feel like I should just answer this. But from one of our listeners who comes in, says, you know, regarding the haze, should I pluck my nose hair so that, uh, you know, the natural... <laughs> Should I not pluck my nose hair so that the natural filter works better? Gurmit, I'm going to stare at the camera. Gurmit, <laughs> do you know how painful it is to pluck your nose hair? Don't do it. <laughs> and wear a mask. <laughs> I'll answer that for you, Dr. Lim. She's not rolling her eyes, so that's good, okay? Uh, Dr. Lim Hui Fang is the specialist in respiratory medicine and intensive care medicine at Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital and Glen Eagles Hospital, Singapore. Thank you once again for being Thank here you. with us Thank today, you. Dr. Yeah. Lim. Good time. Greatest hit.